Hey there, let me introduce you to Convex Auth. Convex Auth is a library for implementing authentication using your Convex backend. Convex replaces your Node, Rails, Django server, your Postgres database, and your Kubernetes cluster manager. It is a scalable, serverless backend running in the cloud with a built-in reactive database. Convex is designed for building multi-user applications. And if your app has users, it needs authentication. But authentication is a really complex component of a full stack app. For this reason, we have been recommending the built-in integrations with mature authentication platforms like Clerk and Auth0. But many developers have been asking us for a simpler solution. The authentication platforms I mentioned have a ton of features, but they also store the authentication data. This complicates your app as that data needs to be somehow synced or shared with your backend and database. This is a surmountable challenge, but maybe you're just getting started and you don't need every authentication feature. You'd rather have more control over the data and a simple architecture to build on top of. Convex Auth is that simpler solution. It is inspired and borrows a little from the excellent Next Auth library now called Auth.js. It is also similar in its capabilities to Auth solutions such as Firebase Auth and Superbase Auth. In this demo, you can see the various sign-in methods you can implement with Convex Auth. It supports sign-in via OAuth, magic links, one-time passwords, and normal email and password combination. You can use any of the 80 OAuth providers supported by Auth.js. Let me show you how to get started with it. To test it out, I'm going to use the create convex command. The first time you use the convex CLI, it'll ask you to create a convex account by logging in with GitHub. You now have the backend set up and can configure environment variables needed by the library. The site URL is required for OAuth and magic links. In this case, it'll be just the localhost URL that Veet uses. You then need a pair of secret keys. The command will generate and set these for you. Finally, the template is set up with GitHub OAuth and magic links via recent. If you know you want to use different authentication methods, you can skip setting these up, but I'll show you how to do this. For GitHub, all you need is to create an OAuth app, set the callback URL, copy the client ID, and paste into the CLI. Then generate a client secret and paste that in as well. For recent, you need to create an account, generate an API key, and paste that in. Now that you're done with the configuration, the Convex dashboard and your app opens. You can now sign in with GitHub and test that the app works. If you look on your Convex dashboard, you'll see that a user has been created. Now that the app is working, let's look at the code that powers it. First of all, there's all the TS file in your convex directory, which configures the available authentication methods. This is where you'll add other OAuth providers or replace magic links with OTPs or email and password. Your schema must also include the tables used by the library, including the users table. On the front end, instead of using convex provider, the app is wrapped in convex auth provider. Then in the app root component, the authenticated and unauthenticated components are used to render different UI based on the authentication state. When not authenticated, the app renders the sign-in form. The key part of the sign-in UI is calling the sign-in function with the name of one of the authentication methods configured in all the TS. That's recent and GitHub in this template. Finally, let's look at how the authentication state is used to power the sign-in experience. The of the TS file exports an auth helper, which has methods for retrieving the current user and session ID. Using these methods, we can return the information about the current user back to the client and enforce that certain functions can only be called by signed in users. From here, I recommend you read through the docs. They go into detail on how to implement the various authentication methods and on the trade-offs between them. You'll also learn how to use the current and other users data on the backend. I hope you'll find the library useful. Please let us know what you think on our Discord.